Just a few comments from me on this and other things. I want to make a couple points about Joe Biden and his administration's serial inability to tell the truth. Now, of course, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin going AWOL, a prime example. Now, we wish General Austin a total, full recovery from all of his health issues. But his health issues are not really the problem. The problem is neither he nor his staff followed the proper communications chain of command. And it sounds like a cover-up. And obviously, it was a huge mistake. I'll tell you a quick story. When I served in the White House, I wound up in Walter Reed Intensive Care Unit on two separate occasions. But my staff immediately informed both the president and the cabinet secretary. Mine were short stays, fortunately, and the boss even called me to see how I was doing. But there's nothing hard about all this. It should be just common sense. But then the Situation Room people knew, the White House operators knew, my colleagues knew, my team knew. Now, the problem is the Defense Secretary outranks the NEC director, so in terms of communications, that office has much greater responsibility to let the president know. This is not about diagnosing health issues. It's about communication protocols. Apparently, now Team Biden is ordering a review of cabinet protocols. But that's so goofy. It's just common sense, not bureaucratic review should rule the operation. Where are the adults? Remember, General Austin essentially run in two wars under the direction of the commander-in-chief. But here, the commander-in-chief never called his top defense lieutenant, and the SECDEF figured he didn't have to let anyone know. Cover-up? Truth-telling? Common sense? Not a chance. But wait, wait. While this Austin AWL fi uh, fiasco is going on, DHS Secretary Mayorkas got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Again, because he was fibbing about the illegal immigrants coming into the U.S. and staying here. Now, he's trying to sell news media that only 70% of the illegals stayed here. And then under questioning, he raised it to 85%. Well, of course, both are awful numbers. But wait a minute. It turns out when the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, did their year-end review, that over 95% had been released into the interior of the country. Hat tip to Breitbart News for the numbers. In FY 2023, more than 3.2 million illegals were encountered at the nation's border, while just 142,000 were deported by ICE. So, last year, illegal aliens who arrived in the U.S. had just a 4.4% chance of being deported within the year. Mayorkas, not much of a truth teller, is he? And of course, from Joe Biden on down, this administration keeps lying to the American people that the border's really closed. Well, what are all those pictures we see on nightly news shows? Closed? Really? Truth telling? Then, of course, Joe Biden keeps telling us how he's cutting the budget deficit, which is a flat out untruth, awarded a bottomless Pinocchio by the Washington Post. And Biden keeps telling us how good the economy is, even though one recent poll shows 45% say they're worse off now than just a year ago. Another poll shows 68% describe the economy in negative terms. And over the past three years, inflationary price increases have outstripped worker wages. And that leads to the affordability crisis. No truth telling there. And finally, in the Biden legal war against Donald Trump, not only is the president and his Justice Department and various special counsels and Democratic secretaries of state lying about Donald Trump's so-called insurrection, which was neither charged nor convicted. A new story from the Georgia branch of the Biden-directed legal war against Trump reports that District Attorney Fannie Willis hired an alleged boyfriend to prosecute Donald Trump. This is a great story. Fannie Willis hired a private lawyer who had never prosecuted anything before except maybe ordering a ham sandwich at the local deli. Well, she appointed him special prosecutor and paid him $654,000 in legal fees since January of 2022. But this story gets even better. 
the two of them took the 654 grand on a world tour, vacationing on two cruise ships, going out to Napa Valley for a glass of wine, and then coming back to Florida for a little fun in the sun. I haven't heard the Biden press operation talk about this yet, but I'm looking forward to their response. Think they'll fess up with the truth? Doubt it. And that's my riff.